Hey guys, welcome back. It's time for another reading update, or since it is Friday, we can actually call it a Friday read. I haven't done a Friday reads video in a long time. Uh, basically the same thing, it's just Friday reads kind of implies you're going to do one every week, and I stopped doing them because sometimes we're reading the same book the next week, it just seemed kind of pointless. So anyway, here's my reading update. Uh, the last audiobook I mentioned that I was listening to was The Mangle Street Murders by M.R.C. Kasasian. I haven't actually finished this. I would have. But unfortunately, I was uh, renting this out from the library, and I didn't get a chance to finish it in time. So I was about 90% through when it expired, so now someone else has it on loan, and I have to wait till they give it up, and hopefully I'll be the next person to get it, and I can finish the book. But um, it was really good. It has a Sherlockian Holmes kind of feel to it, um, but with a bit more of a cantankerous lead character playing the detective um, who has a false eye that keeps popping out. So there's a little bit of humor mixed into it as well, but it is a pretty tight woven mystery uh, and I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, next up, I read some manga. Uh, two series, I read two books in each of these. Uh, they're my favorite ones currently. Uh, I'm just really loving the artwork and the storylines of these. The first one is uh, I Am a Hero. I read volume seven, or Omnibus seven, because there's two in, in one here, so Omnibus seven and number eight, and this is by uh, Kengo Kan Hanazawa. Uh, this is the, the zombie apocalypse kind of manga taking place in Japan with our unlikely hero here, uh, Hideo. He, he seems to be a bit on the spectrum. He doesn't, maybe a little schizophrenic, uh, not really sure. That's how he kind of portrays him in the beginning where he has this sort of imaginary friend he sees in his apartment. Um, He's very meticulous about various things, including, yes, gun ownership. <laughs> he, uh, he, in terms of everything about the handling of the weapon and everything like that, but it's it's coming in handy now and, and kind of turning him into this kind of quasi-hero within the storyline. And the artwork is really good. It does have a, a dark feel to it, of course, with the subject matter, you know, zombie invasions and stuff, but it's just really, really good. Um, I'm really enjoying it. The... Zombies are doing some very strange things in these later episodes. The seven episode seven, I wasn't too, sh well, didn't love it as much. I mean, I've been giving this thing five stars across the board. This one was more of a four star one for me, uh, but then it does take another kind of twist that I wasn't expecting in Omnibus Eight. Uh, they are doing some very strange things, these zombies, and you see a little twist of the point of view from the perspective of these zombies. Um, that I didn't expect, and it was very, very interesting. So, uh, really enjoying that. The next manga series I read from was Blue Exorcist. This is by Katsue Kato, and this is volume 20 and 21. I absolutely love the storyline within this and the artwork. I mean, look at the detail in this artwork, it's fantastic. Even within uh, the volumes, too. Um, let me show you something because I may not give away anything. <laughs> really, really great. Um, this is Rin Akamura. He has a twin brother named Yukio. Together we see their journey as they're training to be exorcists. Uh, they battle demons, basically. But Rin, as you can see, is a bit part demon himself. He is apparently the son of Satan. And uh, so he has some of that demon blood within him and that power, too. And he is kind of trying to suppress that, but also use it in terms of when he's fighting and everything, too. Um, just really great characters. These last two volumes were just over the top, just fantastic, the things that are happening within it. I love the artwork within the story, uh, within the book as well, not just the covers. Um, just really great detail. The characters are fantastic, and each book uh, gives you a synopsis of each of the characters and then a little bit of the, um, the story so far uh, at the beginning of each volume, which is really, really well done. I highly recommend this one. If I, if I had to say my all-time favorite manga, I would have to say it's Blue Exorcist. Um, moving on from there, the only thing else I've read is um, the the books in the Pallister series by Anthony Trollope. I had to backtrack and finish an earlier one, uh, Volume 3. No, sorry, Volume 2. This is um, Phineas Finn. Uh, that was, yeah, that was Volume 2. This is the second one in the Palliser series. First came uh, Can You Forgive Her, then Phineas Finn. I had already finished the Eustace Diamonds. I had to stop this one because the read-along that I was following with 
uh, had already finished this one and I was quite a bit behind and you can kind of read them individually uh, with the exception of this one because there's a direct um, sequel to this one within this series as well. But Phineas Finn is sort of a young Irishman, a very good looking man who's kind of at the beginning studying law but then is kind of convinced to try uh, for a seat in the English House of Parliament and he does succeed in um, sitting for a, a borough and his his political career takes off a little bit of a jumpy start. He's a little nervous. Um, the thought of speaking before the House, his first speech, doesn't really go over well. Um, and then the second one he kind of balks at. And then eventually he, he starts to find his his footing and, and uh, people have come to respect his opinions and things like that too. So uh, for his political career, he's extremely lucky throughout the series. Things just seem to fall into place as he, as he gets settled in. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the one thing you see is his extreme luck within the series. But with his love life, he's not quite so lucky. He does seem to fall quickly in love. Uh, he has a childhood kind of sweetheart that he leaves when he goes off to England to try his hand. Um, there seems to be a kind of unspoken promise between the two of them. But off he goes, and then he falls for um, Lady Laura. And that doesn't work out. He falls for another woman. It seems he... Shortly after proposing to her and, and having that fail, he seems to fall for another woman. But the one thing I liked about his character, that he never sought out um, a match in terms of how it would benefit him. Like, you know, someone who had money or someone who had uh, prestige or something or, or a title. He never looked for that. It, it, he followed his heart, at least within his, within his love life, even though things don't always work out for him in that. Uh, overall, I liked the character... The book itself, uh, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying Anthony Trollope's writing. It's very accessible for a classic. It doesn't feel bogged down by language or anything like that. His characters are very well developed, and we see characters um, within each of these books kind of carrying over <clears throat> uh, from volume to volume. And it's, it's, it's nice kind of revisiting them, like uh, Lady Glencora, uh, who, we, who we saw a lot of in the first volume, uh, pokes her head in within here as well. Uh, we meet a, a Madame Max Gosler, who we'll see in... in subsequent volumes, including the direct sequel to this one, which I'll mention in a minute. Um, and yeah, I, I overall like the character. It's just this, of, of this particular series, which is sort of a political series, this is like the most political uh, of the books, including, again, it's the direct sequel because we're dealing with a, a member of parliament, a young junior member. Um, those aspects of the book I did find quite, quite tedious, kind of boring, and I just kind of Maybe slow down, so that's kind of why I fell behind also with the, with the read along. Um, but in the end, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, um, it's, it was enjoying to see the growth of this character and the progression of him, and and sort of the other characters as well. Their their storylines and how things don't quite work out for them, and, and um, especially Lady Laura, I I, I enjoyed her storyline as well. But um, yeah, overall, I really did enjoy reading this one. And now I've moved on to the fourth book in the series, because I finished the third one, The Eustace Diamonds, and the fourth one now is Phineas Redux. So we're revisiting the character of Phineas Finn within here, and um, so this is what I'm currently reading. I am a little more than halfway through. We're reading 20 chapters a day, and uh, yeah, we're seeing kind of what's happened with our main character. Um, he has made some changes in his political life. The interesting thing about this is there's there's more to it than just the political aspects of it, although we are getting a lot more of that as well. And those are the parts that really just grind my reading, you know, to stand still. It's just, okay, let's move on, get back to the characters and their love lives or whatever, you know, I want to find out more about that. Uh, but this one, uh, which I'm not giving away anything away spoiler-wise, but in the background, in the, ba in the back of the book, it does mention uh, that they're... Um, is a murder, and uh, our main character falls under suspicion. So, yes, now we suddenly, and I've just literally reached that part. So now I have a murder mystery uh, in the background of this, which is really kind of intriguing. I can't wait to see who who the murderer is. Uh, I simply doubt it's our main character. He just doesn't seem that type. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's adding another interesting aspect to the book, so I'm really enjoying that. So basically that's all I have right now. Um, the only audio thing I have right now is... Deadwater, Deadwater Bride. It was one of those freebies that are uh, 
offer to members uh, on audible.com. You get like two free uh, Audible originals. Uh, it's sort of a kind of like a radio drama in a way, but it is a, a murder, mystery, police procedural slash paranormal kind of thing going on. It's it's a little bit of everything. The it's very well voice acted. Uh, I, I'm the the dialogue and the characters are just really intriguing, uh, and the mystery as well. But it's 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 very gruesome. It's very um, graphic, a bit disgusting. Uh, it's a, it's to the point where I I, I want to finish it, but I wish it was over with long ago. So I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily recommend it um, to the faint of heart. Um, like I said, it's like it's very graphic and sexual and a bit disgusting at times. Um, with they didn't need to go into such graphic detail about things. Um, but I want I want a solution to it. I want to see how it's going to end. So I'm going to continue listening to it uh, and hopefully um, the audio that uh, the Audible book that I was listening to prior will be available again at the library soon because I want to conclude that one. But Anyway, that's what I'm um, reading and listening to so far. So I'm just currently picking up the one physical volume here. I'm not involved in any other book right now. Although I feel like an urge to read something else, but this does occupy a lot of my time. So it's it's difficult to warrant stopping that to pick up another book when I'm trying to keep up with a read-along. So anyway, what are you guys reading? Uh, hopefully you're reading something a little more lighthearted, uh, enjoyable. Let me know down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.